Joining us now from Sydney is Jonathan Barrett, Managing Director of Commodity Broking Services. He helps to manage risk for agricultural growers and users. You're pretty bullish here then, uh, aren't you, Jonathan? <laughs> uh, Richard, yeah, we are at the moment. Uh, we've actually been bullish rise for, for some time because it just really hasn't been a performer. Uh, when you look across the spectrum of all the grains. So rice at the moment we feel is one that represents very good value. Uh, we have been long a little bit and it was very nice to see that move last night. Okay, what's the reason behind it? I guess Pakistan and the floods are going to be playing a major role. Well, what we're seeing is that, yes, you're dead right, with the, the floods which we're seeing, uh, obviously in Pakistan, but more so in China, um, we've seen uh, a series of floods um, which have actually uh, affected close to 55 to 60 per cent of, uh, of the area under use. Um, at the end of the day, we actually feel that will affect between 15 and 20 per cent of actual supply for rice uh, in China or growing of rice in China. So we think, if anything, there that does rep represent to us uh, quite a concern particularly when China, are, or China actually grow what they consume. And at this stage at the moment, it looks like they've actually had to import some rice of late. So that, that sends a little bit of a signal to us. OK, if you want to be able to, let's say, take advantage of what you're suggesting is another 30% to go in terms of rice prices, what's the best way to do it? I mean, I understand that you use warrants to bet prices are going to rise. Is that a good strategy? Or some of the companies, perhaps, which are big manufacturers of rice, are they mm. worth investing in? Well, you can look at that. I think the cleanest way is uh, through um, the use of futures or warrants. Warrants are nice and easy because you know exactly up front what you can invest and what you can actually lose. Futures, uh, it's a bit of a large contract and really only for those investors that really understand futures. But I think if it's looking at warrants, warrants are easy, they're easily understood, they're just like options and people can certainly get that upside, upside momentum with a limited outlay. Jonathan, what about, you know, you said back in June that grains were looking cheap and I, we've seen a big lift up here. I mean, what, wheat up 51% yeah. since you made those remarks, corn up over 20%. Do you still stick to that? Um, well, I, I, I do stick to it, but some of the grains have obviously moved. Uh, a lot further uh, than uh, what we've actually anticipated. So uh, grains like wheat are perhaps a little bit overdone and we still see prices um, sort of coming back a little bit but overall we're still quite bullish. Uh, dips certainly on wheat. Uh, corn is trading right at the top end of its range and if we can break through that at the moment then I feel that corn will have a run to the top side. But one I'm actually looking at closely and represents I think the best value um, is rice but also soybean. Uh, soybean in itself, uh, we've had some concerns particularly in China again with what's happening there with the weather and I think uh, soybeans have actually come back to an area where I actually like to accumulate. So if anything, That's if I was looking human. at things, soybeans and rice, yeah.